Is that what I think it is? No way. <laughs> I can't believe that I just captured that. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Liam, and today we're gonna to be checking out my trail camera. It has currently been out in the woods for about a week now, and I wanted to go check it out and see if I've captured anything worth sharing. If you're new to this channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you consider subscribing at any point in this video. Behind me here, I've got eight and a half acres of forested land. I've set up a bunch of bird feeders. I have my trail camera out there that we're gonna go out and check today. I've also set up a photography blind platform and I made a video about that. I'll link it up in the top corner for you all to check out after this one. I've seen a lot of wildlife tracks since we've had some snow that's stuck around for a couple weeks now and I thought it would be cool to go over them and show you what I've got. Uh, we can kind of ID because one of them that I saw I wasn't quite sure what it was. With that said let's uh, let's go kind of explore the property here. We'll, we'll check the trail camera and I, I hope I hope that we have something we're sharing. Now lately I've been doing a lot of bird photography and I think that's just generally due to the access that you have to the winter birds. So here's my, my bird feeder and some suet there. But what, what's nice about a trail camera is that you can capture those moments with some wildlife that's more elusive. Things like bobcats, deer, potentially moose are in this woods as well. I just read an article this morning that out in western Maine someone got a lynx on their trail camera and I know that they're in the area too so setting up a trail camera can get you a little bit closer to the wildlife that you might not see just walking through the forest. Now right in front of us here is the creek that runs from the top of my property all the way down out to the St. George River. And what I noticed the other day was some animal tracks that seem to have started out of nowhere. And I'm not quite sure what they are. I've looked up on ID guides, of course, but I'm hoping that one of you will know better than me. Let's take a look. So as you can see, going from left to right on the screen, we're seeing these little tracks seem to be hopping along. Now this one at the top, it looks like it jumped from further down this little creek bed and into this area. My first thought was maybe it would be a snowshoe hare, but I know that the hind legs of the snowshoe hare lie more flat on the ground. So, you know, this back region would be more elongated. Potentially it could be just a simple gray squirrel, but this seems a little bit larger than what a gray squirrel would leave. So if you're more skilled at this than I am, please let me know in the comments what you think that these trackings are. I would love to know uh, if I ever get a second trail camera, maybe I could set one up going down this creek bed and seeing if we capture anything cool. So I was just walking up and down the creek bed and I came across more tracks that seemed to be better defined and well preserved in the snow. Now in this close up shot here you can see that there's four defined toe pads in this track print. With squirrels their toe pads and their claws digging into the snow and their their prints are similar in size in that two inch region. So. I'm still confused on it, but this is gonna give a better example of what I'm seeing, and hopefully that will allow one of us to be able to diagnose the ultimate answer of what this track print is. Well, on either side of me, it seems that we've got what look to be coyote tracks, very similar to a dog's footprint, but I know that there's not a lot of people out in this area and my dog certainly hasn't been out here. All of that leads me to believe that there's been a coyote in the area. It goes basically about where you are, all the way out, off into the distance, down the river. It's probably why I haven't seen many deer tracks lately. With all this activity, it's got me very hopeful that we're gonna have something cool on the trail camera. I'm starting to get a little bit hungry and could use 
another cup of coffee. So let's head back up, check the trail camera. Let's keep our fingers crossed that we got something good. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm using the Browning Elite HP5 trail camera, and I have this thing set up for just video. I don't really need to shoot photo with it. I make videos for YouTube, so for me, videos are gonna be more desirable. Now typically when I come out every morning with my dog, I'll come walk down and I'll check the trail camera, but I've been pretty busy this week, so I haven't checked it in a good seven days. I'm hoping that there's something here. Where the placement of this trail camera is, is looking back up the creek bed. And the reason that I chose this area is that it's completely separate away from my bird feeders. In the last position that it was at, I was getting a bunch of squirrels, as I mentioned in my previous video, and some blue jays, and of course, uh, always a raccoon poking its head around a tree. So I wanted to put it in a spot where I'm gonna get higher quality chances with wildlife. That's this area right here. I have seen deer prints in the snow in this general area before. So I'm hoping that I might see a deer on here. The nice thing with this trail camera is that it has a range of about 80 feet. So if there's something in the frame, you know, up to 80 feet, it's gonna catch it. It's gonna trigger the camera. And it also has a feature where you can even go kind of an extended longer range trigger as well. Man, fingers crossed. It's been a week. I've gotta have something on here. Okay, so there's only f five videos. Uh, I know that one of that is when I just walked around this, this, uh, this tree to, to film the video. So I'm going to assume that we really only have four. So let's check out the fourth. Yeah, that was a false trigger, nothing there. Oh, okay. So this one looks like there was a bird that jumped right into the camera and then flew away. Let's see if anything comes of it. Does anything come back? I can't tell when I'm just looking at the two inch screen here, but of course I'll have this over the, the big screen right now. And I didn't see anything. Okay, so that was two videos down. I've got two more to go. Oh, okay. Okay, so this was a nighttime shot. It is really hard for me to see what we got going on, but it's on the screen right now. I will cut in if I see anything when I'm watching this back later in the studio, but for right now, I don't think that I see any eyes. At nighttime, this camera has infrared sensing, so if there was something in the video, I'd probably see eyes. I don't think that I saw anything. It might've just been a tree moving in the wind or maybe a piece of snow falling off of a tree. So, okay, three down. One more to go, let's see what we got. Is that what I think it is? No way. <laughs> I can't believe that I just captured that. I was just talking about this. I cannot believe that I just got that on camera. Oh my. As I suspected, um, I shouldn't be surprised that I just saw a coyote on my trail cam. These things are notoriously hated by hunters because they kill the deer, they kill the wildlife in the area. I know that every species in the environment has its ecological role and uh, I, don't, I don't disagree with that statement, but when I was walking around today and not seeing any deer tracks, knowing that there is a coyote in the area, that just I just connected the dots, everything makes sense. Now biologists in Maine uh, estimate the population of coyotes to be around 10 to 13,000. 
And what's interesting about coyotes is that you can hunt them year round. From December 16th to August 31st, you do need a permit to hunt them at nighttime, but hunters here in Maine are able to hunt coyotes year round given that they're such a pest for some species of wildlife. I know that uh, if, if you, <laughs> follow, uh, hunters that I follow, whenever it's a deer hunting day and they see a coyote, it turns into a coyote hunting day. Uh, uh, let me know in the comments how, what your opinion of coyotes are. I personally love them. I think they look uh, absolutely gorgeous as they're striding through the woods, but I can understand certainly from a hunter's perspective why they might not be appreciated in the local environment. For me, I think they're a beautiful looking animal. I'm really satisfied with being able to, to capture it on the trail cam and, and knowing how close uh, a coyote was to my house. Uh, now that I can connect the dots, I think I'm gonna move this trail cam down to the river area where there's that open snow kind of wetland area and set up the trail cam and see if I can get some more shots of the coyotes walking through that wetland. I'll also use this as a moment to make a book recommendation to you and that's Coyote America by Dan Flores. Dan Flores is a wildlife biologist, conservationalist, and he wrote a book about kind of the stigma surrounding coyotes, especially in urban areas and the desire to remove them from any type of urban environment through trapping, uh, even poisoning them. So it's a very eye-opening book from that perspective. It also talks about their ecological niche in the environment and how important they are for stabilizing populations of all different types of wildlife. So Dan Flores does incorporate a lot of positivity to in, in the Coyote America book, and I recommend that all of you read it. Uh, Dan Flores has been on a few different big name podcasts, so definitely check him out, Google his name. I think you might enjoy that book. I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video here. Uh, I, I enjoy making outdoor and wildlife photography related videos here on YouTube. I hope that you consider subscribing if you're not already. But for now, thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you again next week.